Good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, and it's good to bring you the Word of God. Uh, you know, in the church, we've been uh, at the start of the year in the book of Hebrews on Sunday morning and Saturday night. But then we turned a, a corner with the COVID-19, and I've been seeking God for a timely word for every service and every time we get together. And so uh, today the Lord spoke to me, Psalm 37, on trust, delight, and commit to him. And I thought, well, you know, the people already know this word, but you know, there's a difference between the knowledge and the logos of the word Amen. and really a rhema of the word to change you and to touch you. Amen? Amen? So the message is called Trust, Delight, and Commit. And with that, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word today. I pray that it will do the miraculous in us, that it will be effective, that it will be powerful, that you would use it to communicate your voice to your people today. Lord, I'm so grateful for your word. Please help me to preach it with power and authority. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 37, verse 3 through 6. As you're turning there, uh, Psalm 37 is a wisdom psalm. It speaks to man, but not to God. And its tone and style have some affinities with the book of Proverbs. And I hope right now you're in the book of Proverbs because one of the things that the Lord has shown me is that we need wisdom, Amen. right? And practical wisdom is found in the Proverbs. So today is the 24th. Happy, day, happy birthday, Pastor Tom. Make it official. Facebook people, YouTube people. <laughs> Pastor Tom's birthday is today. We celebrate him. But Proverbs 24 is your chapter today. Amen? Amen. So please do that. So Psalm 37 is very much like the book of Proverbs. It's a message of the righteous man's security, and that's the central topic. So verse 3 through 6, I'm going to read uh, the whole passage first, and then we'll get back to verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, dawn the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Verse 3, go back to verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Charles Stanley said this about trust. He says, I have complete confidence that God is able to take care of any situation and provide an answer to any question or problem. He has all the resources of the universe to draw upon in helping each one of us through any type of crisis if we will trust him. Amen? Amen. You know, it's the application of the word. It's actually doing the word. Is and I hope the lights come on today and say, you know what? I know about trust. I know us to rely upon him. But God, help me to actually do that. Help me to trust you in a way that I need to for situations that I've never trusted you before, I need to do that. 
So starting off with a few definitions here, first of all, in the English language, a trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of God. We know who God is, right? We have, we trust is trusting upon the reliability of who God is. A relationship that has that is built on trust. We know that's important with a, a husband and wife. We know relationships are important with trust, even more so with God. Amen. We confess who he is, but do we trust our confession of who he is? And do we trust him for being almighty God for us as well? Acceptance of a truth of a statement from the source of the word of God, a person or duty for which one has responsibility, rulership is a trust from God. Now the Hebrew word is to trust, to rely upon, to put your full confidence in, and believe in someone, namely God, to the point of total reliance. You know, if um, if God stood behind us and said, fall back, we trust and rely upon him to take that step and fall back, right? Amen. If uh, I have some friends, who, if they would say that, I would say, well, you know what, I... Uh, I, I'm not sure <laughs> if I want to do that, but I have some other people who would say, fall back, I'll catch you, and I know that I can rely upon that and trust that to happen. To lead yourself to believe and trust in the Lord God. And that's the Hebrew word that we're finding in this passage. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Get yourself out of the way. Get your understanding out of the way, right? Amen. So if, if God is an omniscient God and this knowledge and understanding and our brain, compared by comparison, fits onto the top of a pen. Who are we to not exchange that for the God who knows everything and can take care of us in such a way? Amen? Yeah. Don't need on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Then what? and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. We're talking about health during this crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Health, COVID-19, all these things that, that come with it, even fear and other things that come with it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And the proverb says, and this will be health to you and life to your bones. You know, you can speak life. Amen. 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 Uh, Rick Perry, I'm not sure if the one of fame or not, but faith as at its heart is about trust. It's one thing to believe in God. It's quite something else to trust him with our lives. We all want deeper relationships built on trust. It's easy to trust when everything is go going good. Amen? I mean, we are, for the most part, great armchair quarterbacks. 
we uh, we can watch this game and watch something and and say how could an umpire miss a strike and or whatever the call and but when we're in the game when things get hard trust takes on a different level that's when the level of trust that you have in God it really is measured because in trial and testing you really know if you are trusting God or not. Right now we can take a poll and say how many are trusting God? Well we are but when it comes down to the test of that is then we really know the depth of our trust in God. A woman by the name of Irene Bryan says, God does, does speak to us, and we need to develop a listening ear and to recognize his voice. Amen. We need to trust him and take action on what we hear. Amen. Trust him. First of all, trust his voice that what we hear is actually God speaking. Trust him enough to believe that and to say, you know, God spoke to me, and I trust that voice to be from God, and I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to rely upon that. Amen. Later on in the chapter, in chapter 37, verse 27, it says, Turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. What this verse is actually doing is explaining verse 3 that we read. is that trust in God is turning from evil. And he says, and do good, then you'll be dwelling in the land forever. Trust in the Lord and do good. The next part of that verse says, and then you would dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. So the reward of trusting God is an abundant provision in the promised land. You know, that phrase, the promised land, means something to all Christians, right? Amen. There are two things about the promised land. If you have eyes of faith, like Joshua and, Ca and Joshua and Caleb, you see the giants and things, but you see the victorious side, and you see the cluster of grapes and all the wonderful things in the pro promised land. And you can say with Joshua and Caleb, we can do this, we can take that land. But you can view the same land through not trusting and through unbelief and say, you know, the land's good, everything good is good in the promised land, but there's too many giants. We felt like grasshoppers in their sight. You know, as soon as we get into the promised land and try to enjoy something good, we're going to be crushed by the enemy. Well, who went into the promised land and enjoyed that? Those, who tr those two who trusted in the Lord's victory and ability and had faith enough for him and said, you know what, I'm going to enjoy the promised land because I know who God is. Amen. Now, if we don't trust him, the promised land is a scary place. Mm -hmm. Amen. But listen, we trust him and the promised land is a very good place. Amen. Deuteronomy 6 verse 3 about the promised land says, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may incre increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. 
But if you're not trusting the Lord and you're full of unbelief and you're scared and you want you don't want to trust God and and you can't go in the promised land, then don't please don't go there because all the giants will get you. <laughs> That's what they said, right? Yeah. How many of you remember any of the names of the ten spies that gave a bad report? You remember any of those names? Nobody does. Nobody, you know, <laughs> nobody knows their names. Why? Because they died in their unbelief. Because God was so upset with their mistrust of God and their unbelief that he, he actually killed them with a plague within a few weeks of their report, and they died almost immediately. Joshua and Caleb, when Caleb was 85 years old, he says, I'm as strong as the day that I went to look at the land. Amen. And now I'm ready for my property in Judah, and I'm going to take a strap on my sword and, and go. And 85 years old, he went out and took his land, yeah. took his inheritance, got his mountain. One is faith, the land is really good. One is unbelief, not trusting the Lord. The land is very bad. I turn to believe that the promised land is very good, Amen. flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And if I have to eliminate a few giants, so be it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Eliminate a few giants. <laughs> Take the promised land. Amen. Trust God. Don't be defeated. If we don't trust him, we're going to die in the wilderness. Verse 4 says, okay, you got the first part, trust him. Right. Verse 4 is now delight in him. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord. Take pleasure in God. And then he will give you the desires of your heart. Have you ever spent time with someone you feel like, oh, every five minutes seems like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm looking at my watch, don't I have something to do? <laughs> Somewhere to go? <laughs> Some people play, spend time with God like that. Oh. I've been with you for five minutes now. Don't you have something to do or have something for me to do? No, God wants us to truly delight in being with him. Amen. Okay, I want to define the word delight both in the English and the Hebrew. The word to delight means to please someone greatly. An experience guaranteed to bring joy and delight, to take great pleasure in, a cause or source of great pleasure. Do we take this kind of pleasure in our time with being with God? Amen. Oh, we, we've been together for an hour. Oh, well, time's gone by so quick. Do you have to go so soon? Well, he, he never has to go, but... You get the picture. Amen. Have you ever been with someone and you enjoyed their company so much and then the time is gone? And said, oh, it was so good to see you and be with you and now our time is done. Well, you delighted in their presence and being with them. Amen. And God wants us to delight in him and actually have some joy with being with him. The Hebrew word means to delight yourself and really to enjoy yourself in the presence of the Lord. Amen. To be genuinely happy spending time with the Lord. I think I'm remembering the story correctly, but one of the most famous pastors in America came to see Dr. Yang Yi Cho in Korea, the world's largest church, actually 
over a million people and you know they have established thousands and thousands of, of churches and so he came from America this preacher came from America and he said the nine names so oh, yeah we know him he's famous and he came to the secretary and said I'm here to see the Dr. Cho. Great. Let me put you on his calendar. Uh, and uh, she said, we can see you this afternoon, but he's got a two o'clock appointment, so we make it somewhat after that. So he came back and he's excited. So he came back an hour early and two o'clock. He noticed nobody's there. And he said to the secretary, I thought you said that Dr. Cho has a two o'clock appointment. He says, he does. Who is he with? He's with the king of the universe. He's with the Lord God right now. Amen. But I'm a pastor from America. Well, you're way down the list, <laughs> buddy. He's with the king of kings. He's got the most important appointment of his day. Amen. Thank you, Why is he the pastor of the greatest church on earth? Because he spent time with the greatest pastor on the universe. Amen. Right? Amen. Happy spending time with the Lord. Amen. Psalm 104 verse 34 says, may, may my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. How's your time with God? Are you having fun, enjoyable, delightful time with the Lord? Is there other things seem like an interruption? First Peter chapter one, verse eight says, though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not know him, not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible joy and glorious joy. So, if you delight yourself in the Lord in this way, then the reward then God will give you the desires of your heart. So if you do not delight yourself in the Lord, do not trust in the Lord, then don't, you can't come to the part where he will give you the desires of your heart. No trust, no desires. No delight, no desires. Everybody with me? Yeah. The reward, God granting the desires of your heart comes as our heart becomes one with him. Listen to this. This is really important. Spending time with God, our heart becomes one with him through trust and through relationship. The idea is that God will grant the desires of our heart because uh, they are his desires and your desires are the same. He placed them there, and they are his desires as well. This is the secret to answered prayer. Amen. If, you're, if you're spending time with God and, desire, and happy to do so, and you're trusting him and happy to do so, and he's going to grant the desires of your heart, that's because your desires and his desires have been meshed together and become one. And you can speak God's heart, God can speak your heart together, and that would be granted because you're on the same page as God. Amen. But if you have desires of your heart that are not on the same page as God, God's going to do you the favor and say, no, thank you. <laughs> if you're not on the same page as God, God's going to do a loving thing for you and say, no, that's, that's not where we're going to go. No. 
Psalm 20 verse 4 says, May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. If your plans are his plans, your desire is his desire, then it's easy to see how God can fully do that for you. John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus said, If you remain in me, this whole idea that I'm talking about, and my words remain in you, then ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. Amen. It's qualified. Amen. If you're in Jesus, he's, his word's in you, and you're one, and you're in sync with God, you got his desires, he's got your desires, and you're one with him, ask away. Amen. Because God's heart and your heart are being fulfilled at the same time, and he will certainly grant your desires because he desires the same thing. Are you getting a revelation this morning? Yes. Is that helpful? Yes. I hope so. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. And if we know that we, he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Because of relationship. Amen. Because of trust. Because of desire. Because, you know, if you're one with God and God's one with you and you're dancing the same dance, you're breathing the same air, it's like Michael W. Smith said, this is the air I breathe. Amen. Right? If you have that going on, then God's going to grant everything that he's put in your heart because it is him. Amen. Trust and delight. Now, verse 5, commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, and he will do this. The third part of the message, trust, delight, and commit, Commit is to pledge yourself or bind yourself to God and his word. I commit, I give you my life. Not a cliche, but actually a transfer of ownership. Amen. I give you my life. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. A transfer of ownership. I commit my life to you to dedicate yourself to the Lordship of Jesus. Some people say, well, you know, I dedicate, my, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. We think that it's a salvation thing, meaning I want to make sure my insurance, fire insurance is up and paid and running. But God means that you want to dedicate yourself to me? That means that you are mine and I am yours. Commitment that ensures a long-term relationship to commit to be loyal and faithful. You know, many people are listening to this and watching this Facebook Live and YouTube video. You need to commit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart, but give yourself wholly to him. Repent of your sins and say, I'm giving myself totally and wholly to you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm tired of my own life. I repent of that, and I totally give you my life. Please come into my heart. Forgive me for all of my sins and wash me clean in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Do that. And don't just say, I, I got saved, I'm not going to hell, I'm dedicating my life, I'm not going to hell. 
No, you give your life to Jesus. Amen. Holy and totally. And if there's anything that's on your heart that's not Jesus, Jesus calls that an idol, and he's going to tear down every idol until he's the only one sitting on the throne of your heart. Type amen. 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 <laughs> when you get back and see this again, type amen for me. <laughs> The Hebrew word is an interesting word for commit. I, I love this Hebrew word. It means to roll away. It's the idea of rolling our concerns fully onto the Lord. To commit something to him is to roll it over to him. Isn't that a great Hebrew word? To commit something to him requires totally rolling it over to him. To remove or and roll away from us to God is to commit our cares to him. You cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. This word is therefore related to trust because when you cast something and commit something over to the Lord, you're trusting him to take it, and so you don't need to take it back. You know, it's like you're giving, Pastor Tom uses the illustration all the time, you know, uh, uh, through the cares of this world, you're putting rocks in the back of your backpack, right? And then when you get to the cross, you take your backpack out, got this illustration right and it's 100 pounds and you laid the cross and when Jesus said you're free you don't want to get the backpack and put it back on and say okay thank you <laughs> leave it at the cross Amen. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says commit to the Lord roll over to the Lord Whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Roll it over to him. I love that Hebrew word. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. You see that? 1 Peter 4, verse 19. So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. So the results of trusting, delighting, and committing to the Lord is found in verse 6. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. He's going to brighten you up. Amen. He's going to make you bright as the noonday sun. Job 11, verse 17 says, Life will be bright, brighter than the noonday, and darkness will become like the morning. Matthew 13, verse 43, Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, and he who has ears, let him hear. I hope you trust this morning with Trust God with everything. I hope you delight so much in him that you are one with him in desire and heart because he's going to answer all those prayer requests. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. And I hope you commit your life to him 100% so that he can make you brighter than the new day sun and dispel any darkness that might come your way. 
Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the rhema power of the word that causes us to trust in you, to delight in you, and to commit to you totally. I pray, Lord, that the effects of Psalm 37 will change our lives today. Bless your people here in this place and wherever my voice is being heard. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. See you soon.